And amen. Man, what's up, guys? I want to welcome you guys to House of Peace. Look, I am so excited for tonight. Tonight is a special day because, look, I know it's kind of different today because we usually do it on Wednesdays at 8 p.m., but today we're doing it on Thursday at 7 p.m. I know it's pretty weird. Some people weren't able to make it, but that's all right. But, guys, I'm so excited for today. We're going to be speaking about a topic that's very dear to my heart, and I'm not going to do it alone today. You know, today we're joining I'm with my very good friend, my homeboy, my dog, my boy, David. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. I'm so excited, guys. Uh, my boy, David, here is a man of God. He's single. I'm just kidding. He's not single, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm playing. But guys, I want to welcome you guys for real. All jokes aside, welcome to House of Peace. Uh, if this is your first time here or maybe you're watching through YouTube later on, what is House of Peace? House of Peace is a place where we gather together, where we just encounter God read his word, learn about him. You know, House of Peace is a thing we do every Wednesday or Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, we do it online, sometimes in person, where we just come together, where we teach a lesson, where we teach a fresh new lesson based on the Bible every week. And we, David and I are honored to do this. We're very excited, very privileged. You know, we don't take this lightly and we're just we're very excited. And, but without further ado, we just want to go right into it tonight. Uh, tonight's topic, man, Woo! It's fuego, bro. Yes, and we're going to be doing a little different. As you guys know, we usually do like teachings. But today, David and I are going to do like a podcast slash interview style. So it's going to be pretty dope. Uh, we're going to be speaking a little bit on evangelism. And then we're going to give a space for you guys to ask questions. If you have any questions on evangelism, on the Bible, on relationship with God, whatever questions you have. So I want you guys to start thinking of questions, all right? But yeah, so what's up, bro? <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing, yeah. man? Good, guys. Good. I'm honored. I'm blessed to be here. I know that God's really going to move tonight and I know that it's going to be powerful. So I can't wait to get into it. Yeah. You want to start us off, man? So tonight's topic evangelism, man, I'm so excited. Uh, I guess we just start off by saying this, what is evangelism? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so basically, um, uh, evangelism i'll describe it simply then i'll go we'll go in detail evangelism is the proclamation of the gospel it's basically just sharing the gospel what is the gospel the good news what is the good news the good news of how jesus went on the cross who died for our sins he overcame sin and now we get to have a relationship with the father so that's what evangelism is but you know i bet david and i we've seen things uh where people had an, an idea of evangelism but it's not really a true evangelism and i just want to start off by saying this um just start off by saying this uh true evangelism comes from your relationship with god mm, period so key and and i i was making this uh i was filming some content today and one of the contents i was filming one of the reels and tiktoks uh, i was filming i said this um evangelism without being surrendered to the holy spirit is not true evangelism and look true evangelism comes from a place of surrender not striving and I can just be honest here. There's some moments in my life where I used to evangelize to look good. I used to evangelize to be seen. I used to evangelize in a mentality of I have to, but not that I get to. I looked at evangelism more of a burden than a blessing. And, you know, but once I came back to the simplicity of just loving Jesus and being loved by him, everything changed. And I just want to make that my first bullet point. I know like many people have questions, but I want to say this. Evangelism. Sharing Jesus, sharing the gospel, evangelism is a byproduct from your relationship with God. And yes. man, what do you got to say about that, bro? I, I really, really agree with that because I really think that we can't live something. We can't share something that we haven't lived. So if we're not living the gospel, if we're not having relationship with God, how are we going to share that with other people? Exactly. Like, how are we going to tell people, yo, like you should come to church or you should like, you know, you should start believing in God. but how does our life look like? Exactly. Like, our, like how, like, it's not about going to church necessarily, but like, how's our relationship with God? How are we stewarding that? How are we doing um, spiritually, physically, mentally? And so that's where I would say that is so key. We must, you know, let that be a byproduct of our relationship with God. Yeah, I agree. This reminds me of a verse. I don't know if I put it in my notes or, but my Wi-Fi shipping. Let me just, I got the Bible right here, bro. First John, this is so good, bro. Woo! And I love the Bible. Where's it at? First John, got you. Bro, I love how you said, you know, you can't talk about something. So I love this. So many people ask me for, <laughs> I love this topic, bro. Yes. Many people ask me, 
evangelism tips. How do I evangelize tips? The greatest advice or the greatest tip we can ever tell you in evangelism is focus on just loving Jesus. Because loving Jesus produces loving souls. Loving Jesus produces loving people. And I love the fact that you said, basically, you can't talk about someone you don't know. You, you can't talk about something you don't know. You know, so, you know, for example, if I had to talk to people, if I had a, I don't know, if I had to talk to people about you, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know my boy David. I know how he dresses. I know his favorite color. I know what he loves, what he doesn't love. It's easy because I, I know you. I have a relationship with you. Mm. But if I were to pick a random dude in the street, I can't tell you jack about him because I don't know him. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Jesus. And I want to read this. I know, like, we're just flowing tonight. Um, yeah. Like, literally, we have nothing written down. We're just flowing. Uh, I love this verse. Uh, first John, uh, the first scripture, it says this. First John, first John chapter one. It says this. We proclaim to you to the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We, we have seen him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. This one is the life. This one is life itself. And he was revealed to us. And we have seen him. And now, check this out. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is, uh, excuse me, that he is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And a fellowship with, is with the father and the son. Jesus Christ. Bro, you know what I love about this? They said, yo, we're proclaiming to you. We're telling you what we have seen, what we have touched, what we have heard. So they're speaking from a place of experience. Mm -hmm. They're speaking from a place of relationship. And this is what true and healthy evangelism is. Evangelism comes from a place of knowing the Father. Evangelism comes from a place of having an experience, having and having that intimate relationship with God. And I feel like so many people are focused on, on preaching the word, uh, preaching Jesus. But I want to say this, and I want to submit, submit this to you guys. Before you focus on preaching Jesus, know Jesus. Before mm. you focus on preaching the word, make sure you know the word for yourself. And like how David said, um, bro, evangelism is a byproduct, meaning evangelism is a fruit from loving and knowing Jesus. Mm. What does That's that mean? So cool. A fruit? Notice how when you look at a tree, when you look at a, I don't know, mm. a tree. Yeah. fruits don't strive to bear they come naturally and it's the same when we have that actual relationship with god and i just want to talk about this for a second bro when god's love becomes your greatest reality everything changes when his love when you discover and when his truth possesses you when you discover who you are in him and you discover how loved and valuable you are by the father bro everything changes and now yeah. i like oh i get so passionate about this because bro evangelism is just simply being madly in love with Jesus that you can't keep him to yourself. Mm. That's what evangelism is. It's not a method. It's not an event. And I know we're going to speak about this in a minute, but let me say this. And I want you to write it down. Evangelism is not an event. It's not a shift. It's a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle being in love with Jesus. Yes. If I, if that's, if I were to define evangelism, that's what it is, man. So, <laughs> bro, and you know, it's, it's funny because as I was, you know, just like preparing for tonight and just praying and asking God, like, what do you want me to share? I felt like many of us have had the mindset and it's almost become like religious that when we go evangelize, it's it's like something that is it's mechanical. Like, it's just something that's that we have to do and we have to do it this way and we have to have these steps. And, you know, I'm like, I'm guilty of that. And I had to repent because yeah. why? Let, let, let's be real here for a second. It's like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to go out on Saturday and I'm going to go out at 10 a.m. And I'm going to be like, God loves you. And you don't have to be going through this and, and all these things. And it's like almost like if we have a script. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, God convicted me of this. God has not called us to have a one night stance Come on. with people. Let's go. What do I mean by that? I don't mean the literal definition. What I mean is. God has not called us to have one night stands with believers, yeah. with souls. God has not called us to evangelize to somebody, have a conversation with them and leave it at that. Like, can we be real here? How many of us have had a, uh, had a conversation with somebody? We've evangelized to them. We've got them to do a prayer and then that's it. Yeah. They get their IG or, or, or they get our number and that's it. That's, that's it. They, they don't come to church anymore or we just plant a seed, but we haven't planted a relationship. God has called us to impact those people's lives like he's impacted ours. Come on. What does that look like? 
it's building relationship just like how we build a relationship with the father so i think that you know it's it's funny because me and isaac always sort of like are in sync uh, sometimes and then today we were talking about it and we're like event like evangelism and when it comes to the gospel the message doesn't change but the methods change yeah. as times go by so it doesn't mean that the word of god is changing it means that the method of how we That's bring true. that to life changes and i was thinking about it and i'm like evangelism is discipleship and relationship it's not yeah. just one conversation come on so this is so key because it all leads back to having relationship with the father it's a byproduct yeah. of it that's right and i want to say like yes i've seen it i've seen it like i've done it i've seen people do it uh yes we evangelize whatever but i feel like one of the most effective ways to evangelize and i want you guys to like understand this one of the most effective ways to evangelize is through your lifestyle and through your example bro jesus said this not put it up right now in the scripture <laughs> um Matthew chapter five. You guys can write it down if you guys want. Matthew, Matthew chapter five. Oh, this is so good. Okay, let me just break this down. Okay, Matthew chapter five, verse 13. I want you guys to check this out. This is Jesus speaking. He says this, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Pause. Jesus calls you the salt and Jesus calls you the light. What does that mean? Mm. We're called to stand out. And that's what people all the time. And I'm tired of seeing this. I'm tired of seeing submarine Christians. Mm. I'm tired of seeing basket-headed Christians where on Sunday, hallelujah, praise God. But Monday to, Monday to Saturday, bro, they're like agents. <laughs> We're not called to live that way. We're called to be bold. We're called to be unashamed of uh, just people that love Jesus. And from that place, we just insane. And I want to just really quickly, I want to just destroy and just shut this deception up that's in the church. You know, many, I got, I get told many times, um, I don't evangelize because I'm not an evangelist. Mm. I'm not called to that, bro. Come on, bro. Let, oh, this gets me so frustrated. You don't have to be an evangelist to evangelize. Just because you don't have the office of an evangelist doesn't mean you can't evangelize. Let me ask you a question, David. What if I went up to you, bro, and I said, I don't worship because I'm not called to be a worshiper? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. What if I told him, um, you know, I don't pray because I'm not an intercessor? No. Yeah. We're all called to pray. We're all called to worship. And in the same way, we're all called to evangelize. Jesus told his disciples in Mark 6 and 15 to go. Go is not a request. It's a command. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. Yeah. And the Bible, one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to make, make us a witness. In yeah. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, Jesus said this. He said, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Yeah. Bro, pause. This is so, oh my gosh. I just unlocked. So look, the Holy Spirit empowers us to be a witness. And something I love so much, and I just want to hit this really quick. Okay, so Jesus said this. The Holy Spirit, you know, will come upon you. He will give you power and you shall be my witnesses. Notice how Jesus never said you would do witnessing. So mm. when I see evangelism, I don't really see it as something I do, but it's who I am. So I yeah. tell people, it's not an event. It's a lifestyle. Whether you go to Walmart, mm. the grocery store, your school, your job, everywhere you go, you carry Jesus. And I love Tal White. I love, I always say this every time I mention this. Tal White says this. It's one thing to incorporate Jesus into your life, and it's another thing to make him your life. Mm. I don't want to add Jesus. Jesus is not an accessory. He's my everything, and my life revolves around him. So I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> but <laughs> evangelism is a lifestyle, and, and I love this part right here. Um, uh, verse 16, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Let me go back right quick. It says, in the same way, let your good deeds. What does good deeds mean? Good deeds means your actions, mm. your lifestyle. It means, yes, it means your, your example. So what was I saying? Um, one of the most effective ways to evangelize is through your lifestyle and through mm -hmm. your example. When people see you, when people see David, when people see Aliana, when people see Alex, Joshua, Blooney, when people see you, they should tell that you're different from the other people. 
when people see you, they should be like, I don't know what's so different about you. I don't know why you're so kind. I don't know why you're so loving. What's, what is this about you? That's what people should say about us. And I feel like yeah. sometimes even as Christians, we're so concerned in fitting in, but we're not caught to fit in. We're caught to stand out. Yeah. Jesus says it very clearly. You are the salt and you are the light of the world. So mm -hmm. I want to hit that point. I want everyone to understand that, that we're caught to be different. We're not caught to fit in. Yeah. We're caught to be the light. We're caught to be the example in this world, man. Yeah, and, and it's so true because, man, like I, I love what you're saying because evangelism is a lifestyle. Yeah. And it speaks about our lifestyle. Oh. When that, that verse said, that verse said, um, let your good deeds. Good deeds, come on. Right. So our good deeds are actions. And I, yeah. I love it because I was talking with this uh, about this with Isaac earlier. Evangelism, <laughs> it speaks about our lifestyle because mm -hmm. our lifestyle is evangelism. Now, how does that look like? So when it comes to our lifestyle, we should let it shine. We were made in Jesus's image, right? So as believers, we are becoming, we're, we're you know, it's like a process of trying to become like the father. I mean, yeah. the son of the father, right? It's trying to become like Jesus. Yeah. Now it's not that we are going to be Jesus, but we are made in that image, on, right? Yeah, yeah. So that should shine. Like, for example, if we're in school every day, like we have friends, we have family, we have cousins, we have, like, we have teachers, and there's something that all those people, like, for example, we're in school, and everybody notices how different, like, me and Diego tend to be. I don't know if you guys know Diego, a very good friend of ours, and then Diego, he's very, like, bro, I even ask God sometimes to give me that love that he has, because he's so caring, he's so loving, he's so sweet, he's so passionate, and it speaks about his lifestyle. It speaks about how he lives with God because it's not just his personality, but it speaks about how his relationship with God has changed yeah. him because he's told me all the time, like, bro, I was so angry before I was a Christian. Like before I gave my life to Christ, like I would get into fights and I'm like, did Diego, I know. And that's mm -hmm. when I realized that the fruits of the spirit become a part of our lifestyle. And that is what will impact the other people. And when we make God the center of our life, like Jesus was saying, he's not an accessory, but he is our everything. I love that. Why? Because when we actually live that, many people will be impacted by it because we're marking a difference. And that's what Jesus has called us to do. That's what, um, yes. discipleship, that's what discipleship is. Yeah. Discipleship and relationship is not checking up on people like once a, once a week. Meeting, you know, hey, on a calendar. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's not it's not putting, giving them a calendar. It's letting us be in their calendar. I love that. Something that, um, that one of our, our youth pastors was sharing with us. And I love this because like, man, <laughs> bro, bro I, I love this so much, man. I love this conversation. Um, bro, like when we do that, we're discipling in such an effective way. And it's the way that Jesus discipled. He said, follow me. He didn't say, hey, how are you doing? Can I pray for you? Like, he sat at a table. Bro, he sat at a table with sinners, bro. Like, that, that touches me so much because, like, sometimes us as Christians, we get all iffy. We're like, oh, no, I can't go to that party because it's not a Christian party. I can't I can't be friends with that person because, like, can we be real? We, I can't be friends with that person because they're not Christian. They don't believe the same things that I do. I have to cut these people off. And it's okay to do that when you're becoming a believer course, because yeah, yeah, we're weak in our flesh. But... Once you're at the point where you're, where, you know, where you're stronger than when you accepted God, we are called to impact the world. We're not called to impact the church. Come on. So when we go and evangelize, quote unquote, what are we doing? We're reaching out to those people who are in need, not of a conversation, but of a relationship. Come on. That's so good, man. That's so fire. And I feel like... Ah, um evangelism is birth in intimacy yes mm. but also evangelism is birth when you understand the love of god and the heart of the father and i want to say this um many people ask me and i and i know this might be one of the questions um uh, but boldness comes from love the bible says love casts out all fear so boldness comes from that and not just that but when you understand how much god loves people like something I realize as I just continue reading the word, as I get to know the father, as I get to just have, you know, history with God, bro, God is in love with people. 
Everything he did is because of people. God's vision is people-centered. And let me say this, bro, because before I came to Christ, I really with my boy Diego. I was the most, bro, rude, mean, messed up dude in the world, bro. I hated myself. I hated people. I treated people wrong. I was just such a hot mess, man. Mm. I couldn't. I was just angry all the time. I was bitter. I was jealous, so insecure. But when I had an encounter with God's love and when I started to grow in his love and just know him more, develop that relationship with the father, mm. everything changed. I remember, oh, my gosh. About two, three years ago. Oh, it makes me emotional. I remember I said this one prayer that changed my life. I remember I told God, I said, God, I give you my heart. Now give me yours. And mm. I remember since that day, bro, everything changed. I started mm. seeing people not out of, of, uh, of criticism, but of compassion. Mm. And I remember when I was reading through the word in, in Matthew, Matthew chapter nine. <laughs> Let's go to it right quick. Yeah. I love the word. Let's go to it. Let's go to um, it. It's right here. Excuse me, Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Yeah, Matthew chapter 10. Oh uh, my gosh. This is so amazing. Wait, is it? No, Matthew chapter 9. I don't even know. Okay, yeah, here it is. Oh, this actually speaks on evangelism. I forgot. This is so good. Okay, so look. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. It says this. Bro, how much of you guys love the word, man? Come on, bro. The Let's word go. is just amazing. Uh, okay, Jesus says this. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of the area, teaching in the synagogues, and announcing the good news about the kingdom. Oh, that's like another topic Come for on. another day. Okay, hold up, bro. <laughs> oh my God, this is... Okay, what gospel was Jesus talking about? The gospel of the kingdom. You mm -hmm. know, oh, David, we're going to about it. We're about to we'll cook some stuff up. Bro, these days, there's so much false gospels. Then mm -hmm. they give you an example. Oh, repeat a prayer, and then you're going to go to heaven. Boom. Mm -hmm. Or, um, what's it called? Give your life to Jesus and you don't have to do anything else and you're good. Yeah. That's not the gospel. The go Can I even be real? Oh my God, this is going to confront so much people. I've seen people, sadly, even at churches, and they go up on the stage, they do the altar call, but all they talk about is God's going to bless you. God's going to change your life. Mm -hmm. Your life is never going to be the same. Give your life to Jesus and you will change everything for the good. Yes, that's a part of it. But they don't speak on surrender. They don't speak on on. on of the, Jesus said, if you desire to follow me, you're going to have to pick up your cross, deny yourself. Like, mm -hmm. people don't talk about that. So what is, So we need to understand, we're gonna probably going to talk about this more in the Q&A, but we need to understand that the gospel is not just, the gospel is not, this might sound weird, but the gospel is not about God's blessing. It's about him. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many people get it, you know, make stuff that they make it all about what God can do for you instead of the person of Jesus. And mm -hmm. we have to evangelize from that place. Now, oh, God's going to bless you. Yes, he's going to do all those things. But that's just a, like, I like to tell people, the blessings, the provision, the miracles, that's just a side of fries, bro. Jesus is the burger. You know, he's the, yeah. um, that's, that's a talk for another time. So, okay. So Jesus uh, announcing the good news of the kingdom and he healed every kind of disease and illness. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Pause again. I Yo. feel like so many people, they preach the gospel, but they don't demonstrate the gospel. And that's something that we have to understand. The gospel yeah. is a gospel that we must demonstrate. There's 28 chapters in the book of Acts. And each chapter in there, something supernatural goes on. Guys, we're mm -hmm. called to, to walk in the supernatural. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, so this is the part I wanted to see. Uh, verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, meaning the souls are plentiful. They're ready, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. So when Jesus saw the multitudes, when Jesus saw the people, the main motivation of Jesus, oh my gosh, mm. God's greatest desire was his love towards the people. You know, I want to read this verse. I had to say a lot of Bible verses. It's amazing. Okay, here it is. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Uh, says this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So what am I trying to say? Did you know that Jesus, the Bible says, he had joy, the, the joy that was set before him. And you're probably saying, 
what do you mean Jesus had joy going to the cross? Because, bro, the cross did not feel good. Being nailed to the cross, being whipped, being betrayed, that didn't feel good. But the reason why God had so much joy, the reason why Jesus was full of joy is mm. because he thought of us. The millions and billions of people that were going to come to him. When Jesus was on the cross, he thought about how he's going to give us a way so we can have relationship with him. So what am I trying to say with all this? God's heart is souls. Mm -hmm. God's heart is people. So when you develop that relationship with God, when you develop that intimate, close fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you will, be, you will begin to love people. Because when you have a relationship with God, you will start to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And from mm -hmm. that place, man, like I said, when God's love becomes so real to you, it's impossible for you to keep your mouth shut, man. Yeah. No, and something that I would add to that is that maybe like, maybe some of you guys are in here and you guys are like, okay, so how can we do that? Exactly. How can, how can we start showing people God's love or how can we um, evangelize? Like maybe because you're saying like, how can I evangelize in this way that you guys are speaking about? And I would say three things. And if, for those of you guys who take notes, you guys can write this down. Live, walk, and show God's love. Come on. I would say those are the three things that um, are the, the greatest thing that we can do because when we live it, we're accepting it. We're accepting God's love. We're walking in it. And then we are showing it to all of those who are around. I want to add a fourth point. You said live, walk, and show. Sure. How about yeah. live, walk, talk, and show? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so good. Yes. Yeah, that's so good. As you're saying. Yeah, so I would say that that is one of the greatest ways that we can evangelize. And not just show God's love, but show the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. And I was talking about this um, last, last House of Peace. It's not just um, showing God's love, but it's showing patience, kindness, joy. And it's not saying that we're perfect. No. You know, there's, you know, there's going to be days where we're going to be upset. Let's be real. There's going to be days that are not going to be good. There's going to be days where we're mad. There's going to be days where uh, we might be sad. It's, it's mm -hmm. the truth. It's, we're human. It's normal, right? But when we, when we live in that and we walk in that, we're able to show it to those around That's us. Right. And that will make such a great and impactful impact on the people around us that will lead them to God. That's so so that's, I would say that's how, that's one of the ways that we can show people God's love and we can cool. show that that's a lifestyle. It's just like, I know like people are expecting like a method, a one, two, three step, but bro, all you have to do is love on him. All mm -hmm. you have to do is just know him. And just from that place, I promise you, everything changes and, and bro, we can speak for more out. We can speak like for so much more. But we want to leave some space for a QA. Um, guys, if you have any questions on evangelism, if you have any questions on what we're talking about, I want you to you could type it in the chat or unmute yeah. your mic. But before we do that, I had some questions from the Hop community chat and from Instagram. So we're gonna answer that and then we're gonna answer your guys. So let's see the first question. There's a lot. Hold up. Let's go for the first one. Oh, uh, snap. Okay, I like this one. I like this one. Okay, so we spoke on evangelism as a lifestyle, but mm. yes, evangelism can be, you know, speaking it. So, so evangelism can be when you speak in it, when you walk in it, yes. So someone asked this, how do you overcome the fear of talking to people and the best way to approach them? Hmm. That's a good one. Wow, that's a good one. You, you want to both answer it? Yeah, you want to, you want to set off? Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll say something. Um, I think I lived with that fear for a while, and it wasn't so much fear of talking to people, but it was fear of being judged. Mm. Like being real. Like it was fear of like, oh, if I talk about God at school, I'm gonna be made fun of. I'm gonna be a bully. So that was always a fear of mine. It was always like, oh God, like if 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 I want to evangelize, but if I evangelize, I'm gonna be judged or or people are gonna say things. And then it was to the point where I had to realize, bro, this isn't about me. This isn't about what people think yeah. of me. It's about what God thinks of me. And so I had to surrender that. So I know that it's, it sounds so cliche, surrender it to God. I know it sounds so cliche, but when you truly surrender it to God, like when you go, God, you know what? I surrender what people think of me and I'm just going to do this. And then you launch yourself out. That's yeah. another thing. Sometimes we overthink it so much and we don't just do it. That until we like, bro, I remember that there was this one time God really tested me. And I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. We were in Dolphin Mall 
uh, it was this was last year around this time, and we were doing an evangelistic outing. We were going out to evangelize, Let's go. and there was this guy at a cashier, not like like in those little booths that you walk into at the mall, in the middle of it, and God's like, go speak to him, and I'm like, okay. And I'm over here like trembling. I'm so nervous. I'm freaking out. I hadn't evangelized in forever. I'm like, God, what do I do? Like, how can I do this? I don't know what to do. And I was like, for some reason, I just launched myself out of faith. Bro, I started talking to this guy. I don't even know what I said, bro. <laughs> I started saying the most random stuff. I was like, I was like, God loves you and and he wants to love you. And like it didn't make <laughs> sense. It was like, it was like an egg scrambled, bro. It was like a scrambled egg. It, it made no sense until this guy told tells me and he looks at me, he's like, oh, are you from King Jesus? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I go to your church. He's like, I respect you, bro. Thanks for everything you're doing. And I'm like, That's hilarious. yo, I was like, there is no way that just happened to me. That's so embarrassing. Like this guy from my church, like I'm trying to evangelize him. <laughs> and I seem like I've never even done this. And I realized like, bro, God is, God was testing me. And it wasn't so much about what, what are you going to say? It was more about, are you going to respond to the call that I'm giving you. Come on. So the question was, how can I get over that fear? How can I, what are some tips to talk to people? I would say, just go out in faith. Yeah. Just go out in faith. As simple as it sounds, surrender your fear, surrender what you're feeling and ask God to give you the grace, to give you the words. And when you do it, he'll back you up. Yeah. That's, I, that's what happened to me. I, I realized that that moment, <laughs> when I talked to that person after it, I realized, Yo, bro, like this is so simple. Exactly. Because it's not about it's not about what you're going to say. When you respond to the call that God gives, he will give you the words. Because you're responding. So what would you want to add to that, bro? Bro, that's I love that so much. And I feel like so many people overcomplicate it. How do I evangelize by doing it? Like Nike, just do it. David, how do you learn how to pray? By doing it. How do you learn how to deliver people? By doing it. How do you learn how to evangelize by doing it? You know, I feel like so many people overcomplicate it. If you want to evangelize, step out and start, you know, and, mm. and of course there's different ways. And, and I love how we're just speaking about like evangelism through relationship, but okay. So there's like there's a bunch of questions about fear. And I want to talk about overcoming fear really quick, overcoming fear in evangelism. And I love how you said, and my story is I, I deal with the same thing, but, um, I want to say this, the fear of man, the root of fear of man is pride. Because you're wondering, oh, what are they going to think about me? How am I going to mm. But bro, when you're Whoa, so in love so with good. Jesus, you become a David. Like a David in the Bible, where he went all out as a king, butt naked, praising the Lord. And you say, you know what? I'm going to be more undig a more undignified than this. So that right there is everything. So when you, like, I don't know how to like explain it, but when you actually have an intimate relationship with the Lord, and when you're rooted in his love, everything changes. And as David was mm -hmm. talking, I had this verse came to mind, and I always share this in evangelism. And just to give some context, okay, so Peter and John were arrested for preaching the gospel, and they stood before the council, and they were questioned by the priests and religious leaders. Uh, so they got arrested. They actually got arrested for preaching the gospel. Uh, they mm -hmm. healed a man at the gate. They were preaching the gospel. Souls got one. He got arrested. And look, look what these people said about them. Look at this. I want you guys to take this to heart. So they stood before the council, they're in prison, and look look what happens. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Check this out. It says this. The members of the council were amazed. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. The what? Come on, can you guys just type it in the chat right quick? The boldness. Boldness, boldness, boldness. They saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they can see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. And they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Mm. Woo! This is wow. so good. So look, when, the, when they stood before the council, they saw Peter and John. They go, Hold up. They're just ordinary men. They don't have no <laughs> degree in Bible school. They didn't go to KGU, <laughs> but the ones that go to our church. They're ordinary men. But then they said this. And... They begin to recognize them as men who had been with Jesus. Mm. Boldness comes from being with Jesus. Yeah. Boldness and confidence come when you spend time with your father. And like we said earlier, evangelism and boldness 
is a byproduct from being with Jesus. Mm. And I feel like my second point is ask God. Ask God. And this is also in the Bible. 29. Uh, ask God for boldness. Ask God. I feel like like sometimes we don't we don't ask the Lord. Um where is this at? 420. I forgot where it was in the Bible. I think it's somewhere. I don't know where it is. But in the book of Acts, uh, people met together in the upper room. Uh, not in the upper room. People met together to pray. And they asked God, give us your bonus to preach your word. And the mm. Holy Spirit came and filled them up. And then they began to preach the gospel and bonus. Mm. So I'll say number one, um, just know the Father, like we were talking about earlier. If you want to be a if you want to go crazy in evangelism, you gotta go crazy in that secret place. Yep. If you want to be a radical preacher, that's just crazy. But I'm telling you, you gotta be crazy in that secret place, crazy in love yeah. with Jesus. And like I said. Also, bonus comes from love. I feel like many people, like, they ask God for bonus, and that's amazing. Keep asking God for bonus, but ask God for more of his love. Because yeah. when his love, like I said earlier, when his love becomes his greatest reality, it's impossible for you to keep your mouth shut. Um, mm. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But he yeah. gave us power, love, and a sound mind. The Bible yeah. also says that there's no fear in love. You know, mm -hmm. and I love asking people this question. Let me ask you a question, bro. Uh, De uh, not Diego. David, what's one of your favorite dishes you ever ate? Like, what's something that you ate and you just love so much? Pasta. Pasta? Where at? Olive Garden? Where at? Uh, cheesecake. Cheesecake? Oh, I got it. I never tried Cheesecake Factory. There you go, there you go. I'm going to go. It's a promise. I'm going to take Ali out with me. But, um, okay, so cheesecake. When you tasted that pasta, well, I bet you fell in love, right? You're like, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> and, you know, to a natural human being, when we experience or when we taste something good, it's naturally that we like to share it with others. For example, for mm -hmm. me, I ate um, Texas to Brazil a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, that thing was busting, bro. The meat is like butter, bro. And oh, forget about it. They feed you, too. It's crazy. But look, uh, when I experienced this, when I tasted this, I told my family, I told my mom, like, mom, you got to try Texas to Brazil. I was like, I was telling people, my, my homeboys, my homegirls, yo, you got to try Texas to Brazil. It's fire. And if you're someone like me, you'll post it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> but let me say this. It's the same with Jesus. Mm. It's the same with God. When you taste and when you experience the love of God, bro, you can't keep it to yourself. Yes, yeah, so bro, key, bro. You're going to post it on your social media. You're going to tell your friends. You're going to tell your family. You're going to tell everybody, everywhere. Yeah. You and that's the place. That's where true and healthy evangelism comes from. Mm -hmm. And I love how Pastor Sway, he said this one time. He said, Everybody has an evangelist inside of them. Everybody has an evangelist inside of them. And he began to explain it like this. He was like, oh, all y'all ladies, when a new makeup product comes out, when a new fancy beauty, so four of it, tell your secret, whatever. When a new thing yeah. comes out, you on the phone call with the ladies talking all about it, sharing it, telling everybody. Us boys, we talk about that. The NBA, the NBA, the game last <laughs> night. We talk about Miami Heat, you know, like, oh, we hear something good or something. We, it's our natural response to share it. When a new movie mm -hmm. comes out, you tell your friends about it. When a new Jays, a new dunk drop, you tell your friends about it. It's the same with God. Yeah. It when doesn't we change. experience him, when we taste him, when we know him, when we touch him, bro, it's natural that we, we just share him. And yeah. That, that place, mm -hmm. just, just loving him. You know, and, yeah. and also boldness comes from righteousness. The Bible yeah. says the righteous <laughs> are as bold as lions. Because let me be honest, when I was lukewarm, I feel like I couldn't speak about the gospel because you can't talk about something you don't live. Mm. I was shameful. I was guilty. So I couldn't speak from that place. But when you're right standing with the Lord, righteous means right standing. Bro, it gives you the confidence and boldness. Look, when you're living in sin, you lack confidence of doing the things of God. You see, sin drains you. Sin drains your confidence to enter God's presence and to preach his gospel. Mm. But when you're right standing, when you're righteous with God, bro, you got nothing to hide. You're just crazy. And I also yeah. say, boldness comes from the Holy Spirit. And I read this early, but I read it again. Um, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us to become a witness. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us to be confident and preach. So that's what I know is a lot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's answer another one.
No, for real. Yeah, yeah. So but before before we move on, I will say this just to end it off. And it's very short, sweet, and simple. When you want boldness and you ask for boldness, God will give you opportunities to be bold. Come on. Hey. That's, that's all I gotta say. That's when you right ask there. for opportunity, <laughs> like when you ask God, give me boldness, he's gonna give you opportunities to be bold. And that's where you have to respond and you have to be bold. Yeah. And just not overthinking it, just just answer to what because he's giving you it as you're answering to do what you want to do so let's move on to the next one we're going to be here forever bro okay, you know what? Let's, let's, i want you guys to ask us some questions so if you have yeah. a question unmute your mic type it in the chat about evangelism y'all can go ahead you know, i know alex has one he's had his hand raised for a so while alex you can go ahead and ask bro hey thank you thank you so much man i, I appreciate that opportunity to uh just share something today of course, bro it's good to see you again, Alex. Yeah. I remember, yeah, what's yeah. up? Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Is it okay if I put my video? Yeah, of course. Hey, sure. guys. How Let's are go. you? Yeah, so, um, you know, I wanted to share something. Uh, uh, a few months ago, I remember uh, my wife and my daughter, we went down to, I think it was like the Grinch and Ice at um, Gaylor Palms in Orlando. Ooh. And um, there was um, there was an employee there that was cleaning outside. And I remember walking up to him and I was like, hey, bro, um, you know, do you know where the park is? Because um, my daughter wants to play. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just around the corner. Um, but he was like, you know, um, he kind of was signaling at me. And I was like, oh, are you OK? He's like, oh, um, no English. And I was like, oh, I, I speak Spanish, you know, so I talked to him in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we, he showed me around and then I'm just playing with my daughter for like about 30 minutes. And I see him walking back and he's just cleaning, like, you know, behind the park. And I just felt God like talking my heart. And he was like, bro, you got to go talk to him. Like, there's something wrong. Like, um, there's something wrong with him. You just got to go in there and like talk. And I was like, I'm playing with my daughter. Like, you know, <laughs> he's OK. You know, he's just doing his he's doing his work. And then I was just like, man, I think, I, you know, I, and then, you know, I think like when you're saying about evangelizing and like listening to God, I think I think that's a, that's a key thing because w God wouldn't put you in a place that he doesn't want you to help somebody else. Like it's all about bringing, you know, people to the kingdom. So, you know, I was like, okay, let me drop everything. I told my wife, like, hey, watch it for a second. I gotta go, you know, evangelize to this man. So like, I just went in there and I was just like, you know, I'm sorry to, all in Spanish, I was like, you know, I'm sorry to bother you. Um, but God has told me that uh, I need to sp speak with you and just like, you know, ask you what's going on, like what's wrong with you. And then he was just like, you know, um, I left my son in Peru and I moved here and um, he doesn't want to come and join me. And it's been, you know, it's been six months and I don't know why, um, you know, he mm. doesn't want to come to the, to the U S with me. And, and like, I think there's so many opportunities here, but you know, there's drugs and gangs and everything that he's doing out there. And I don't think he can let go of it. And, you know, I feel like giving up and I was like, well, let's just pray, you know? And I was just like, let's just pray uh, today. And, you know, I was like, uh, dear God, just like, you know, we pray, for him and his son and and we just ask that you bring his son to the right state of mind and that yes he can you know um he can come and join his father here you know and but it was like life changing it was um it was it was crazy and um you know i again like the whole the whole you know he, he thanked me afterward and, and you know he was super kind about it and at the end i just felt like man like god sometimes needs you to speak the truth and needs mm -hmm. you to kind of just say the things that he puts in your heart for the reasons that he puts it like only he knows you know but Sorry, for us man. to deny that um uh, i think that's the tough the tougher part you know because i could have easily said forget it like i'm yeah. not gonna do that um but i think just walking in the spirit and just trusting him that he has your back and then, then you're not going to be judged and if you're just you know who cares like i think at the end of the day it's like you're doing something that god is putting in your heart to be able to oh, help yeah. others so yeah man oh, and so, i love what you said because it speaks about everything that we've been speaking about i love the testimony that you just shared and I love the shirt that you're wearing because oh, it really yeah. goes with this, bro. Yeah. Look, yeah. Matthew 6, 33, it says, But ye first shall seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we seek his kingdom and when we seek his righteousness, God adds these things unto us. God adds the boldness. God adds the grace and favor. God adds the words. So when we're seeking his kingdom, I love everything that he was saying because it speaks about his lifestyle. He was yeah. able to... He was able to be like, you know what, God? Okay, I'm going to surrender the, the time that I'm spending with my daughter. I'm going to yeah. surrender that real quick to go speak to this man that you're telling me about. It speaks yeah. it speaks about the lifestyle that he's living. And it, it speaks about, it, it just speaks about this verse too. And the, literally the shirt that he's wearing, 
seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we're seeking that constantly, we are able to respond to the call that God is giving us. Yeah. So, yeah. And something so key I love about the testimony you shared. It wasn't really a question, but powerful testimony. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is that God is looking for someone willing and available. Mm. You know, I remember about, uh, I remember one time, a long time ago, I remember I was praying and I said, God, I'm not perfect. I'm not the best looking. I'm not the most anointed. I don't have no special gifts or special talents. But I remember God spoke to my heart. He said, I'm not looking for none of that. I'm looking for someone who is willing and who's available. And that's what God is looking for. He's looking for a surrendered heart. He's looking for someone that's willing to be obedient to God. So I love that so much. I love, thank you for sharing that, bro. Yeah, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, any questions on evangelism, please put it in the chat. You guys can go ahead right now. Yeah. That's so powerful. We'll give you guys a second. Uh, so How do you live for God full-time as a college student? I hunger for him, but school takes up a lot of my time. I'm going to let Isaac answer this one. <laughs> Ooh, so basically, in other words, you're speaking on balance. How do you live for God uh, full-time as a college student? Bro, how do you... <laughs> I love this. Okay, so I go back to what Todd White says. It's one thing to incorporate Jesus into your life, and it's another thing to make him your life. And something I understand is... And I always understand that. And you know what people usually say to this? Oh, put God first. Oh, I love how my sister says it. She says, I don't, I don't put God first and then family and then school. No, I put God and family, God and school, God and this. So it's, mm. it's, it's what's it called? Including Jesus in everything you do. The Bible yeah. says in Colossians 3.23, to, uh, it says, with, with all your heart and soul, do everything unto the Lord as you're doing it for God, not for people. So do everything you do for God. Dedicate your homework, dedicate your job, dedicate everything you can to Jesus. And not just that, but, I learned in my life, uh, when your priority, uh, when your seasons change, your priorities change. For example, mm. when I was in summer, bro, I had no school, no work. Your boy was three, four hours in God, reading the Bible, watching sermons. I was living it. When school came, that cut out half of everything, bro. And then when I started working, plus ministry, bro, <laughs> I felt like my world was falling apart. And I want to share this really quick uh, revelation. Uh, the Bible, it says this, Jesus said this, Jesus, there was a story in the Bible where Jesus was in the synagogue with his disciples and people were leaving offerings or they're dropping offerings. Um, there was this rich man that gave a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks, boom. And then there's this poor widow that gave one coin, one coin. And Jesus asked his disciples, yo, which one of these gave more? The disciples are like, yo, the thousand bucks, Jesus. And Jesus was like, nah, the one who gave the most was a widow. Because the rich man gave a portion of what he had, but the widow gave everything he she had. So that's key. So maybe you're with you, maybe you can only spend 20, 30 minutes with God in the secret place. You know, maybe that's your thing, but as long as you put, as long as you put him as a priority, you know, and I feel like um you just make him the center of everything. David, I don't know if you want to add to that. No, I I, bro, I think you answered this spot on. I think that um, I would, all I would add is just balance. Just yeah. like how Isaac was saying, just try and balance it out. Like how he was saying, once your seasons are changing, your priorities would change, but he is the main priority. Yeah. So you just have to be diligent and keep that balance and just, you know, everything else that he said, I would, I'll just leave it at that so we can answer the next question. And it's, how do you know that God is calling you to do something and it's not just you trying to do good works? Mm. Bro, that is that's a really good question i don't know if god is calling you to do something it is not you just trying to do good works bro if god calls you to do something there's some indicators number one you will have a passion for it your mm -hmm. your passion is connected to your purpose not just that but bro the bible says this very clearly and i know this is like a whole other topic but gosh hearing, i love that question but hearing god is this like hearing god People be like, oh, I don't hear God. Yes, you do. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. The question mm -hmm. is, are you listening? So I feel like it's so key is just hear the Lord. And if God is calling you to do something, obey it. You know, like yeah. sometimes we overcomplicate it and like, oh, no, obey it. You know, it's that simple. And bro, the sometimes like, I feel like people get it mixed up. Like, I don't feel called to do this, bro. If Jesus told you to do something in the word, it's not that you're called to it. He, he, he commanded you to do it. So, for example, in this case, evangelism, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. So 
that's why I disagree when people say, oh, I'm not called. Okay, look, I understand I'm not called to be an evangelist. Yes. But that doesn't mean, oh, I'm not called to evangelize because we're all called because mm -hmm. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said that. Yeah. So that's what I was saying, man. No, that's that's definitely something that is such a great question. And what I would add to it is also that you know that God's calling you to do something when you know his voice yeah. and when you know how he talks to you. And that's something that is so key. Um, Ronald actually gave a preaching on it. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but Isaac, if you can, send the preaching from last week in the Hop community chat so they can hear it on how to hear God. And I would say that um, something that is so key when it comes to that is how does God talk to you? If you know God and you spend time with God, you will know how he speaks to you. And therefore, you will know that he is calling you to do something. So that's that's um, that's what I would add to that. Okay. Uh, I know Chelsea has a, a, her hand up. I think she has a question. So she can you guys can go ahead and unmute your mic or ask in the chat. <laughs> so you know, I, yeah, give me. Oh, yeah, yeah. He can go first. Wait, what happened? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Wait, is this my boy Blooney? No, I did not. Oh, why? Oh, Gerald, what's up, my boy? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Yeah, everybody, I don't know. Everybody say Blooney not sound apart. It's probably what's just question, like, bro? What's your question? okay. So the question is right. So boom, a lot of times you know, um, say if we are called to evangelize, and especially when I uh read about this, I remember I was reading First Corinthians two, right? You know how um who was it again? It was um, I think it was Paul. Or Peter, when he said, like, you know, he knew everything, except, um, he forgot everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified, right? So my question is, right, a lot of times when we try to, you know, you know, preach the gospel, express, you know, with love and show people, you know, the things that, um, you know, that Jesus has done in our lives and what, you know, Jesus could do for their lives and stuff like that, right? How do you, like, go about, um, you know, especially uh, preaching the gospel to them? And, you know, say, I know, like, it's a process, right? And, you know, people are sometimes going to reject it before, you, you know, they fully surrender, right? But how do you, okay, so how do you, like, you know, tell the message to people without them, you know, probably re um, rejecting it or, you know, them are like us fearing them away from the gospel to Jesus Christ? And how do you overcome um, people that try to stop you about preaching the gospel, like, it's, it goes deeper than this. It's something I have to speak to you one-on-one -on -one about, but yeah, basically but the base of my question is like, you know, how do you preach the gospel and like, you know, get someone to, you know, instill it in them, you know, with, you yeah, know, to yeah. let them keep it. Yeah, so I'll say- you know, we're not called to save people. We're called, you know, plant the seed, but, you know. It, okay, yes, 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 yes. I'll say three things, actually. We need to understand that some are called a wind of soul, some are called a plant, and some are called a water. The Bible mm. says God is the one that brings the increase. So I noticed that, like, every time I evangelize, it's not repeat this prayer after me. No. Sometimes I'm saying, hey, God bless you. And I tip them. That's it. Or sometimes I open the door and like, hey, God loves you. Can I pray for you? And then sometimes I just share the word. So you need to understand that some are called to win, some are called to plant, and some are called to water. And the two, uh, yeah. other two things That's I would so say. Good, bro. Wow. The other two things I would say is this. Um, okay, please. I want everyone to hear this and understand me. And I had to learn this the hard way. <laughs> Our job is not for them to receive the gospel. Our job is to preach the gospel. And as mm -hmm. harsh as that sounds, I want everyone to be saved. I want everyone to, you know, yes, I love God. Amen. Thank you. I receive it. Bro, even Jesus got rejected. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Bible says um, when they reject you, they don't reject you. They reject me. Jesus said that. So just understand that when they're rejecting you for Jesus, they're not really rejecting you. They're rejecting him. Mm -hmm. And can I be honest? Like, so I, I don't really get it. Like, I don't, okay. I'm not trying to sound like from a weird place, but I don't mind being rejected. I don't mind being made fun of. Matter of fact, in school, people call me Jesus freak. The things people said to me, I take that as a compliment. And I'm not even trying to joke around or sound like all oh, this. I'm being serious. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care. People's view on me is not going to change the way God views me. So when I'm just captivated by what he thinks of me, look, I said this a thousand times and I'll say it again. True freedom is found when you stop caring what people think. And it's when yeah. you put your focus on what God thinks of you. Mm -hmm. That's where true freedom is found. So number one, your job is to preach the gospel, not for them to receive it. I want you to remember that. 
And number two, uh, we're always going to be rejected, man. Like, like I said, yeah. it's going to come. Not everyone's going to accept you. Matter of fact, the Bible says people will persecute you, you know? Yeah. And I'll also say this. Make sure you are preaching the gospel, not just in truth, but truth and love. Because I yeah. remember yeah. I was talking with my sister and his revelation, powerful. Truth, look, truth without love hurts people. But truth yeah. with love heals people. I have that in my I notes. See, let's go. Come on. I see people yeah. on YouTube, and I'm not trying to judge but this is not Christ-like. People screaming, you're going to hell. That's not love. Yep. That's not love. Mm -hmm. Jesus wouldn't do that. Yeah. We need to learn and understand walking in the love. How does that look like? Walking in kindness, walking in patience, walking like God was patient with me. Jesus said, love one another how I love you. So we need to understand how to walk in that love and walk in truth and not be scared to speak the truth because sometimes we water down the gospel. No, don't do that. Preach the gospel. We preach it with love. Now I'll say this, and David, you can add on to that if you want. Uh, oh, yeah, we're speaking about walking in the supernatural earlier, right? I want to mm -hmm. drop a point. When people think of the supernatural, they think of miracles, signs, and wonders, and prophetic. Yes, guys, please. I think we're going to say that for another lesson. <laughs> but we're called to move in that. But sometimes I forget. People forget this part. If you want to walk in the supernatural, walk in the love of God, because the love of God is supernatural. Oof. So, oof, that's so that's powerful. So, yes. if you want to walk in the supernatural, walk in the love of God, because His love is supernatural. So, that's what I would yeah. say: walk in truth and love, and know that our job is to preach the gospel, not for not for them to receive it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, what I would add to that is this: um, I would say first, we have to change our mindset, and exactly into what Isaac said. Some are called to water, some are called to plant, and some are called to. Uh, or was it uh, the full thing? Win the huh? soul. They win, win the soul. soul. So I think that it's so important that that is the mindset that we go into it with. Because we don't know if we're speaking to a soul that has already been speak to about, about God. We don't know who we're speaking to. So only God knows who he's going to use us to speak to. So I think that's so important that we're in the spirit and that we're in, you know, like in that moment, we're connected with God and we know what we're doing. And then second of all, bro, I would say, rejection comes with mm -hmm. the part of the package persecution yes. is a part of the package john was um uh, arrested because of preaching the gospel mm -hmm. and there are many preachers who have been arrested even in the times that we live in today because of that i'm not saying you're gonna get arrested no, what yeah. i'm saying is, is that how do we deal with persecution it's not it's not so much about dealing with it it's more about living living with it like you feel me? Like I don't know yeah. how much sense that makes, but when you're mm -hmm. when you're being persecuted um for, for mm -hmm. preaching the gospel, it's a constant pursuit. Jesus lives in a constant pursuit after us all of our lives. You know how much moments there are as humans that we want to throw in the towel or that we don't want to we don't want to keep um you know living for God, that we don't want to keep on praying, we don't want to keep on doing anything that has to do with God. And there's yeah. many moments like that. And the constant thing that I always see is the constant pursuit of God over our lives. Right. The constant pursuit yeah. of Jesus. So it's a constant pursuit over those souls. Now, it's not annoying them and nagging them every single yeah. day, on texting them. But it's about being there for them, being yeah. open, being willing to be there for them. Because it's going to be a day where they're going to come to you and they're going to be like, yo, bro, I need prayer. Yo, bro, I need this. I, I need that, yeah. whatever it is. So that's what I would, I would, I would say um, to answer your question. And don't be afraid of rejection. Don't there's, no. There's really oh, no. Yeah. Um, I, have a, I have one little short question to add on. So it's just going to be, you can give me a short answer. Uh, A lot of the times in class, like, especially, you know, when you when you have the ears of a Christian, it's like you hear so much of blasphemy, you know, using Jesus' name in vain. All it is, right? Um, A lot of times, like Isaac said, when, when you have that lovely relationship with Christ, you can't shut up and talk about it. And in my class, my teacher, uh, he a little Buddhist. But, like, you know, I, I love that guy to death, though. That's my teacher, though, you know, great guy. But a lot of times, like, because, you know, he, they always, you know, talk about it in the class, be acting up. They be, or everywhere I go, they be like, yo, you keep forcing, keep talking, you keep talking about Jesus. It's like you forcing it. But, like, you know, it's Jesus, man. How can, can I stop? Coming, bro? No, I mean, That's I'm not being overexcessive. <laughs> yeah, I'm not overexcessive about it. But, you know, especially if they're going to say, you know, oh, my uh, or you know Jesus name in vain I'm like for example my teacher would be like oh my god and then like I, I back him up like oh my god it's great yeah or he say Jesus uh, Christ I say, yeah Jesus Christ that's right 
you know, you're a little Buddhist, but I still love that teacher to death. So it's kind of like, how do you face when when people tell you like, oh, you're you're forcing it, you know, when you're not forcing it? Bro, that's a compliment, bro. You know, it's funny because a couple of years ago, I had the same problem. Did you know that? I had the same problem. Mm-hmm. With my boy passed away. Swing. Oh, I love that guy so much. You know what they told me? He said, Isaac, you're not too passionate about God. You can never be too passionate about God. But who cares, bro? Who gives a yeah, crap that, on what people well, do? And of so course, there's passionate. wisdom in it because you don't want to be mm-hmm. that one dude that's like, you know, bugging everybody. But being in love with Jesus, bro, that's, bro, yeah. don't, don't let anyone shut you up, bro. That's yeah, that's a good problem. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Constant, you, constant Thank pursuit. You, like, not so much about nagging and annoying them in a way because that's how they see it and we don't. But more so of uh, being, like, they know what you've told them. So yeah. be there for them. Live like, it. Be, be the example. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, relationship. It all goes back to that. have relationship with them. Have, and not so much about, like, literally Cut going to take them out for a coffee, but, like, be there for them and be have relationship yeah. outside of that. Yeah, exactly. Talking to add on your other question, then we're going to take two more questions and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray for you guys. Uh, Holy Spirit going to move tonight for sure. Look, about rejection, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. He said this, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie all about you and say all sorts of evil things about you mm. because you're my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, mm-hmm. remember that the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Bro, the Bible literally says rejoice. The word rejoice in this context means leap for joy. Be grateful. The Bible says, uh, it's one of Aliana's favorite Bible verse. It's in Acts chapter 4 verse something. When they got persecuted for Jesus, literally, they got whipped. They left rejoicing because they, they said, oh, we were just, we were just persecuted for Jesus. Like we need to understand that's our that's our mindset. That it doesn't matter what we go through, bro. My Jesus took nails on the cross for me, and I tell people all the time. And people tell me, Isaac, why are you always talking about God? And I tell them, how can I not? That's my question. How how can I be ashamed of the one who gave everything for me? How can I be ashamed of the one who is not ashamed of me? He did everything on the cross. He he set me free. He saved me. He delivered me. He changed my mind, changed my heart. Like he, bro, how can I not keep it to me? How can I not uh, share it? How can I keep it to myself? So this is just, is just knowing that, you know, and when you walk in that fear of man, uh, fear, everything just disappears, man. And you just want to share him because you just love him so much. You know, that's where everything comes from. Hey guys, so he'll take two more questions and then we're going to go ahead and start praying. Today was pretty fire. I feel like there's so much more to say, but we're going to say that for another day. Yeah, so um, I think Chelsea has her hand up too. She wanted to ask something. Chelsea, yes, Chelsea. Hi. Wait, is it Chelsea from like the youth wear? Yes. Let's go. What's good, gang? Hi. So it's not a question, but I wanted to share that last question that um David mentioned about like, how do you know whether it's like, um, basically the Holy Spirit convicting you to do something or if like you're just putting it in your head because I dealt with that and mm. I want to share that for people to know I would say that if it's like a tugging in your heart and yes. you feel like you're battling in your mind like oh should I do it like half of you wants to but then half of you like is like that's where fear comes in then I feel like that's how you know it's the Holy Spirit convicting yeah. you because it's like a battle like part of you wants to and that's the Holy Spirit convicting you and then the other side is like fear where you don't want to do it because that's your flesh. Yeah. So a mm-hmm. way to know if it's just like your heart is just telling you, like you look at a group and then it's just like, go, it's go tough. evangelize. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I would say, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit and it's just not you trolling with yourself. I agree. Mm-hmm. And let me say this. Why would the enemy or why would the flesh tell you to talk to someone about God? Yeah. So a hundred percent of the times that's the Holy Spirit telling you. And there was this question on IG which I would just incorporate that to, to just add what you said. Someone said, do you do you evangelize when you feel led or do you do it and then you do something? They, they said something like that. You don't have to be led to evangelize. You know what I tell people all the time? I say this. Don't speak to nobody who Jesus didn't die for. <laughs> Bro, Jesus said preach the gospel to everyone. And let me say this. There's some... There's some uh, 
yes, sometimes we're led, sometimes the Holy Spirit leads us, but bro, share it with everybody, everyone you see, man. And yes, you share it, but you also live it like how David is saying. So yeah, there's one more question. Well, there's so much more I want to say. Ah. How do you evangelize on social media without getting addicted to social media and then all of a sudden your mental health gets affected? I'm going to Isaac go out on this one because I don't got social media. <laughs> Bro, that's funny. How do you evangelize on social media without getting addicted to social media? To be honest, I mean, naturally speaking, it's funny because I feel like some people don't believe me. I literally just use Instagram to post and I don't even use it that much. I mean, that's a, that's a good question. I don't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being on Instagram. It's just, a, it's like yeah. about the boundaries of like your limit on it, like disciplining exactly. yourself. I would say like Chelsea is saying, it's so good. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with social media, but is that your idol? Or not even just that, but like, are you spending more time in social media instead of the secret place? You know, yeah. I would just say, just make sure your priorities. I mean, I don't know. That's a, that's a good yeah. question. Uh, just make sure God is your priority. Mm -hmm. and you should be chilling <laughs> uh, i mean look i don't have social media but what i would say what, what i would say to this is they say how do i evangelize on social media without getting addicted to social media and then all of a sudden our mental health gets affected i want to say this first social media is a tool that we have yeah so it's like how we said in the beginning the message doesn't change but the method, method change. changes yes right so this is a method this is a tool that we have yeah. So we have to change our mindset on how we view it. That's right. Because many people see it as a, see it as an addiction. I see it as a blessing. Yeah. Now, now it's about creating that boundary in within about how how you're gonna use it. So now, if you're if you're using social media and you're answering people's DMs on how they're asking you questions on how they you know how how they need um help or prayer whatever it is, this is all a tool that we're using to evangelize. Now, where it becomes an issue that I've seen with many people is, is that once, once that isn't happening and you're constantly on the app, it starts affecting your mental health. Yeah. And this is almost like a natural thing that happens because of the fear that this app causes, because of the anxiety that an app can cause because of the news, but because of what's going on. So what I would say is, is that when you use these apps, have boundaries and become disciplined in that. So when you use the app, Know what we're using it for. If you're using it to evangelize, use it to evangelize. If you're using, um, if you're using the the app now and it's been starting to become an addiction, place it to the side and surrender it to God. Yeah. If you have to go on a fast from social media for two weeks, bro, go for it. Let's I go. Think, yes. I, I, I think it's I think it's about creating boundaries and cr within ourselves on these apps and on these platforms. So let's use it for the glory of God. And while we're using it, if it's affecting us, let's also be wise. Let's, you know, let's, let's like, you know, like let's step back for a moment and be like, okay, this is affecting my mental health. I need to go on a fast from it and, you know, just have some time to myself. It's okay. It's like, it's okay to do that, bro. Like it's, it's, it's okay. Like for those of you guys who are like, I want to evangelize, but social media has been doing this or that. It's okay to take a break. So it's good. okay to take a step back. And just, you know, be in the presence of God. I don't have social media, but that is... No, bro, you don't have social media, but I was like, that's so good. I didn't even think about that. And it's so true, because sometimes... And I feel like my perspective is different on it, because I love how you said social media is a tool, because it is. Social mm. media is a tool. And I tell people, and I explain it all the time, back then in biblical times, they had to travel and donkey or horses and ships just to preach the gospel to another town or city. Now we get to just pick up a simple smartphone and we get to preach to millions across the world. So when you oh, understand that, and like, it's amazing. And yes, and I, I love what you said about boundaries um, and, and also take breaks because even as a social media content creator or whatever, uh, be, taking breaks is so important. And sometimes I facet it. And I'm like, oh, I just want to be with you. And I feel like my point of view on it, maybe you are doing social media already, maybe you whatever. I feel like what's your motive on it, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I feel your motive is super important. And I even, I fell into this, you know, focusing more on content, focusing more on doing, focusing more on pouring into others, focus more on ministering to others instead of ministering to him. You know, everything yeah. you do operates from a place of intimacy with God, or at least I wanted to. So I remember the Lord told me this one time. He said, focus more on ministering to me in private more than you minister to people in public. Yep. So social media, evangelism, 
ebooks, all these things, leadership, YouTube videos. All that is just an overflow of my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I love what you said. Like, that's so good. This uh, is an, another, another thing that I would add is this. I would ask you, um, all of you guys like there, maybe you're trying to uh, evangelize on social media. Do you have the itching ear? What do I mean by this? This is something that I love that Ronald was saying. The yeah. itching ear is, is that once you hear a revelation from God, automatically all you want to do is go share it. You want to know what's a powerful boundary that you can have that will, like, you know, like, I guess, take away the chances of you becoming so affected in your mental health by social media when you're trying to share the gospel. It's don't share everything that you hear. Exactly. What do you mean, David? What do you mean? When you hear something from God, first apply it and live it. Once you're applying that and you're living that and you've lived it, then you can share it. That's right. How, is, how does that have to do anything with the question that you guys just asked? When you become so fed up in sharing revelation instead of living revelation, Come on. it will cause you to have um, like, uh, um, like your mental health affected. It yeah. will cause you to become sad and all this stuff that, that comes with Instagram and all these apps. Why? Because you're constantly focused on ministering what God is ministering to you. That's right. So I, would, so I would say be wise. That's um, good. Yeah, like I would say, I would say be wise. Don't have the itching ear. First, hear what God is telling you, live that, and then you can apply it. Because when people when you post this stuff, when you post a revelation, people are gonna start asking you, How can I apply this? And you haven't even applied it. That's right. And then that's that's what's gonna start causing us to, to fall into that trap. So that's what I would tell you guys. When you guys hear something, first live it, apply it, then share it. And it will, and the, the chances of you becoming addicted to that is going to go so much down. Trust guys. I don't even have social media. And I know that just, no. from, just from personal experience. Coming soon though. Let's go. <laughs> just from texting no. my friends or, or texting in the chat and sharing a revelation. I, I, I was guilty of that. I was that like, goes for like, ministry, like overall, you know, huh? I, I yeah. feel like that goes for ministry and like yep. in general. And I love telling people these three L's, the three L's of life. I don't know if I shared it with you before the three L's of life. Listen, learn, and live. And I'm, mm, yeah. I remember reading the word to preach. I remember getting a revelation to preach it. But then the Lord told me, I don't want you to, I'm not sharing this for you, for you can preach it. I'm sharing this to you for you can apply it. And I feel mm. like, oh, that's so good. People confuse because, look, you can speak information, but not revelation. And God doesn't want that, you know? Yo. Bro, when you speak from the head, you touch the head. But when you preach and speak from the heart, it touches other people's hearts. So that's so key that we have to live, learn, and then... No, no, we have to listen, learn, and live it. And you probably heard this saying, all of you heard this saying before, um, live what you preach. I disagree. Don't live what you preach. Preach what you live. Yes. That's what I agree. Uh, and yeah, just I go overall in general, not just for social media, but in ministry and and everything you yeah. do. And like how someone said in the chat, uh, don't just be hearers of the word, be doers. Because that's what matters. Yeah. From, your do from your being, that's where you pe preach from. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Love that. If you want to just wrap up and some, say some final words, man, before we, we enter in prayer, bro. Oh, right. <laughs> I have so much. Like, wow, bro. I know. Um, man, put the Bible away. <laughs> I say let's go for it. Let's, let's do it. Sure. And, and just a quick summary, guys. Uh, we're going to pray. And I know this was very different because every time I did something on evangelism, I always spoke on points. And then, you know, but today we spoke from evangelism, but from a place of a lifestyle. So we just encourage you guys, if you want to evangelize, if you want to go crazy, it all begins at the feet of Jesus. It all begins at having that relationship with God. And maybe you heard me tonight, um, you know, you're like, I want to do these great things. I want to evangelize. I want to, I want to do what you're talking about, but yet you don't have a relationship with God. And I want to share this story. <laughs> I want to share this funny story right quick. Um, I remember one time my family and I, we were going to church, right? My mom, my stepdad, and my sister. And my mom, my hilarious, I love my mom. Shout out to my mama. And she was like, everybody, hey, put your seatbelt on. Armando, put your seatbelt on. Sanaya, put your seatbelt on. Isaac, put your seatbelt on. She was telling all of us to put our seatbelts on. So we put our seatbelts on. And as I was putting my seatbelt on, you know what I noticed? My mom was telling everyone to put their seatbelts on, but she didn't have her seatbelt on. <laughs> so we were just laughing. We were joking about it. I was like, mom, how are you finna tell us to put our seatbelts on if you don't got yours? And I remember we were laughing or whatever, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me at that moment. 
And if you remember, the Holy Spirit said this to me. He said, evangelizing without relationship with me is like telling everyone to put their seatbelts on, but you forgot to put yours on. And I was like, whoa, that's, a, that's powerful. So, and I want to say this, guys. And the most important thing in our lives, even above evangelism, is having that relationship with God. And I feel led to do this. And I feel like it's not even like a call for the loss, but call to commitment to Jesus. I feel like this is a call to actually surrender and actually commit to pursuing a relationship with God. I feel like sometimes we get so caught up in doing, but we forget the most important thing, having that relationship with Jesus. You know, there's nothing that can compare to having a relationship with God, guys. I made many dumb decisions in my life. But the greatest decision I ever made in my life is giving and surrendering everything to him. And I want to say this. Many people say, I believe in God. And that's amazing. That's the first step. It's not enough to believe in God, though. The Bible says even demons believe in God. You see, believing in God is the first step. But following God, that's where everything changes. Um, and I just want to make an invitation to you guys tonight. You know, I believe... Uh, the Lord just wants to just use you guys. But most importantly, he wants to know you. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible in Matthew uh, chapter 7. Uh, in Judgment Day, Jesus said, many will come to me. Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We healed the sick in your name. We cast it out. We did all these things, miracles in your name. But Jesus will say, Jesus will reply, depart from me. I never knew you. You know what that means? I never knew you means I never had a relationship with you. And I tell people all the time, what's the point of being used by God if you don't know God? What's the point of being used by God if you don't know God? And I'm speaking to everybody here. The most important thing in our life should be our relationship and intimacy with the Lord. And maybe you, this is your first time here. You're like, I don't know what I got myself into, but whatever you guys are saying, I want to be a part of it. Let me tell you something, bro. Jesus loves you and he wants and he longs and he burns and he yearns to have relationship with you. Look, Christianity was never intended to be about religion. It was intended to be about your relationship with God. And I want to tell you today that God loves you and he wants relationship with you. But let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you. And I'm speaking to everybody here. Um, the Bible says uh, that sin is what separates us from God. You know, I tell people... Uh, People tell me all the time, if God is so good and loving like you talk about, then why does he send people to hell? You see, God does not send people to hell. Your own sin does. But God gave us a way out. And that way out is named Jesus. You see, sin is what separates from God. The Bible says the, the consequences of sin is, is hell. The consequences of sin is death. But I want to tell you that Jesus gave us a way out. On that cross, Jesus overcame sin and he died for our sin. He did all that because he loves you. And because he wants relationship with you. And I don't just stop there, but the Bible says that if we repent. And, you know, people made the word repent like a bad thing. Repent is one of the most beautiful words in the world. The word repent means to just turn from your sin and turn to God. It means to change your mind, change your heart. That's what God wants. He wants your heart. He wants your life. And, and I just want to, you know, <laughs> funny. it's funny because... I don't even want to lead you guys to a prayer. I want you guys to talk to God yourselves. And, and as I just put worship tonight, uh, I want you guys just to talk to, talk to God the way you... I just want you to talk to God in your own words. In your own words. I'm not going to lead you into a prayer. No one's going to pray for you. I want you to speak to God for yourself. If this is your first time here and you're saying, Isaac, I want to commit to having a relationship with God. Or if you're saying, Isaac, I'm tired of being a submarine Christian. I'm tired of being lukewarm. I'm tired of living one foot in, one foot out. I want to surrender. If that's you tonight, the Lord is calling you. He's calling you into a relationship with him.